Hello, and welcome to our introductory course on the Scrum Body of Knowledge, or SBOC, a definitive guide for Scrum and the rules for the game. In this session, we will look at another of the five aspects of SBOC framework, risk. As part of this chapter, we will discuss what is risk, the steps in risk management procedure, such as identification, assessment, prioritization, mitigation, communication, how to minimize risks through the use of Scrum approach, risks in portfolio and programs, and finally, Scrum versus traditional project management with respect management of risk. Let us begin by understanding what a risk is and how risk management in Scrum is addressed by the risk aspect. The purpose of the risk aspect is to define risk and describe how to manage risks in Scrum and the tools that can be used in this regard. What is risk? Risk is an uncertain event or events that can affect the achievement of a project's objectives and may contribute to the project's success or failure. Uncertainties that can have a positive impact on a project are called opportunities, whereas uncertainties that could negatively impact a project are called threats. For example, a software project is normally prone to risks such as key staff leaving or people with required skills not being available resulting in delays. That's a threat. Requirements may not be gathered or understood accurately by the team leading to poor quality deliverable. That's a threat. A new technology may become available leading better quality product. That's called an opportunity. Managing risk must be proactive and iterative in order to avoid or minimize the probability of major issues cropping up during project execution. Risk management begins when a project is initiated and continues throughout the life of the project. One of the biggest advantages of proactive risk management is that it enables the product owner and the stakeholders to assess and confirm viability of the business and make more informed decisions on continuation of a project. Risk management is Scrum. In Scrum, deliverables are created in short iterations called sprints. This enables the Scrum core team to minimize the project's exposure to risks. However, uncertainties can occur any time, even in the simplest of projects. So it is important to have a strategy on how to manage them. Central to risk management is the assessment of the probability of a risk occurring and the probable impact in the event of the occurrences. Risks with the high probability and high impact rating should be ideally prioritized over those with a lower rating. It is helpful to calculate the probability and impact of a risk if the identified risks are analyzed for the possible causes of their occurrences and the potential effects on the project's objectives if and when they occur. Difference between risks and issues. It is helpful to know the difference between risks and issues in order to manage them effectively. Risks are the uncertainties related to a project that could significantly alter the outcome of the project in a positive or negative way. Some examples of risks for a construction project can be raw materials required for construction may not be supplied in time, or their prices may go up during construction, or they may be of inferior quality. The painting crew might be delayed due to heavy rain, which could negatively impact the project schedule, etc. Issues are those events that are occurring or have occurred and affect the achievement of project objectives negatively. As issues are events that are occurring or have occurred, there is no need for probability assessment as required in the case for a risk. Issues must be assessed for impact and managed in order to successfully deliver the project's results. Some issues that a project can face are funding is not approved, requirements are unclear, etc. It must be noted that if risks are not effectively addressed, in time they may become issues. Hence, the goal of risk management is to be prepared, with plans in place, to deal with any risks that can occur. Risk attitude. Risk attitude refers to the attitude of the key stakeholders or organization toward risk with regard to an initiative. It is important to understand the risk attitude of the stakeholders as they influence the project's initiation and continuation based on the project's exposure to risks. Risk attitude is influenced by three factors, namely 
Risk appetite indicates the amount of uncertainty that the stakeholders or the organization is willing to take on and initiate or continue with the project or any other initiative. Risk tolerance indicates the degree, amount, or volume of risk stakeholders will withstand. Risk threshold refers to the level at which a risk is acceptable to the stakeholder organization. A risk will fall above or below the risk threshold. If it is below, then the stakeholder or organization is more likely to accept the risk. Essentially, the risk attitude of the stakeholders determines how much risk is considered acceptable for an initiative to begin and continue. Risk attitude is helpful for the Scrum core team in understanding the tolerance levels of the stakeholders in relation to various factors of the project, such as cost, quality, scope, schedule, etc. Risk attitude can be measured using numerous tools or technique. One such tool is utility function. Utility function is a model which is used to express the stakeholder's level or willingness to accept risk. There are three categories in the utility function model depicting the attitude of stakeholders toward risk taking. They are risk averse, risk neutral, and risk seeking. Now, let us define each. Risk averse. This category of stakeholders is generally unwilling to accept any amount of risk irrespective of the anticipated benefit. All identified risks must be remedied for an initiative to begin and continue. Risk neutral. This category of stakeholders is neither risk averse nor risk seeking. For example, if there are three projects, say A, B, and C, each with a varying degree of uncertainty and returns. The stakeholders who are risk neutral would prefer a project that neither has very high degree of uncertainty nor very low returns. This category of stakeholders is willing to take on reasonable amounts of risk for a given level of returns. Risk seeking. Stakeholder is willing to accept a project with high level of risks if it can deliver high returns or benefits. For example, if presented with two projects, say A and B, and if A is a project with low risks and average returns and project B is high risk and high returns, then the risk-seeking stakeholders would generally choose project B.